COVID-19 has left many uncertain about their future. However, it is not just about doom and gloom as some people have become innovative in ways that have opened and created new opportunities in many aspects of their lives. For single mother Candice Hughes Bengnoche, her job as a tour operator crashed after borders were closed in March. Contemplating her next move, she looked deep within herself and an idea emerged, exquisite liquor. Candice's idea would soon turn into a passion and become her only source of income to take care of her children. She boasted that her products is superior and utilizes only local suppliers. Well being in a queen's castle, she allowed us into her kitchen to be part of the brewing process for the sorrel liquor. Well, my brand Exquisite was born in 2016. And out of that brand, we provided tour and destination services to foreign students every year. We also expanded in 2018 and started to do transport services. 2020 hit and the COVID-19 pandemic left everyone unscathed. And my both streams of income came to a complete halt. Exquisite liquors was born. I had to become creative and innovative as an entrepreneur, as a young mother of two, to really survive through these unprecedented times. And because of that, my love for Sorrel, my love for Christmas, <laughs> my love for beverages and local traditions, I really dived into creating something unique, but also something traditional. Sorrel is really and truly synonymous with Christmas. For a lot of people, once you see Sorrel blooming anywhere, selling anywhere, even if you don't have a calendar, you know it's Christmas time. You know it is that time of year when we brew it, we drink it with our local traditional spices. And so Sorrel just had to be the first liquor that came to our exquisite table. Trinidadians love alcohol. We know that. <laughs> and Christmas also goes along with that and with family and friends and sharing a nice drink. And so I felt it was time to adultify and bring Sorrel to a more modern feel add that alcohol but also give it a smooth finish so that secret recipe that i have is not just putting some rum with some sorrel but there's a smoothness to it that everyone loves it was quite challenging at first um, when everything came to a halt you're left wondering what do i do the first thing you start applying for jobs because that's you know that's what you you think you've gone to school you have your masters i'm going to apply for work and then you realize that I go to school not just to seek employment, but to create employment. And with my knowledge, I did an undergrad in geology. Some people don't know that. And then I did my first master's in cultural studies at UWI and a second master's in management studies, learning how to manage your own business. And I figured, you know what? This is the direction I need to head in. I create employment not only for myself as an entrepreneur, but also for others. Because as my business expands, I then need to get other people to help out. So I am helping the local economy by me starting up this venture and really branching out into it. But it's very challenging because it's something I've never done before. I've never created liquors before. In my family, I'm known as the juice queen. <laughs> Every family function, I must carry that famous orange juice. So I'm always good with beverages. However, diving into something brand new, it's very scary. You have those fearful moments where you wonder, I wonder if anybody's going to like it, if they're going to enjoy it. What if they don't? What if they bash me on social media? But you use your critics and you use that constructive criticism to actually develop you even further. And that's what I've done with this product. Young people out there in Trinidad and Tobago who are thinking about or contemplating about starting your own company, this is the year. This is the year to branch out and do that. Start your small business. You can advertise online, on Facebook, social media platforms. You can do that and you can get your business out there. We can support each other in what we are doing. Buy from your local farmers. Buy from somebody who is making um, other um, products for the Christmas season. Support them. Because when you support a local business, you are putting food directly on that table. You are feeding those children directly. It's not going through a large conglomerate and trickling down, the CEO all the way down. You are feeding this family directly. We are helping each other. And together, we can inspire and aspire as a nation to do what is best for our country.
So, Candice, we've seen all the culprits that actually goes into making yes. sorrel here. Um, you said there's a secret. Mm -hmm. Is a secret here? <laughs> here we have some of the traditional spices that we yeah. use, right? Some people may use powdered, but I go for the original and the traditional. Mm -hmm. The way my mother would make it mm -hmm. is you got to brew this. And you leave it to sit and really draw out all of that spice flavor and give it that kick. So how long you boil your sorrel for? Well, we put it for some hours and we leave it to brew. We give it an opportunity <laughs> to really pull out all of the essence of the sorrel accompanied with these spices here. And then we take it from there to get the alcohol in it. Hmm. So, see here, this is bay leaf. That's right. So this is where? This is where you get this from? Get I get from. this from Sangri Grandi. This is where I'm from. I'm from San Grandi originally, proud Grandi girl, <laughs> and I go to Grandi to get my bay leaf and my spices. Nice. Why is that? Why is that? Well, I like to give back to my community. I like to stay grounded to where I'm from mm -hmm. and to who I am. I have all of my extended family there as well. They are very big in supporting me in all of my ventures. And so this is one of them. Okay, nice. So after the process of boiling, yes. where do we go? From there, we do all of our straining. Sorrel is a fruit, a plant. So it has a lot of pulp, a lot of particles. We gotta get that out. So you'll see in the end, my product, the clarity that is there is undeniable. And so there's a, it's a very tedious process to get it to that point. It's not just pour, pour and mix. You really got to sip it through, get all of those particles out and really draw in from that and add in everything else as we go along. Well, all right. So we're going in the kitchen now. We're going to see this process. Oh, so this are, you, are, you, are you going to be helping me? Of course, and Michael as well. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> He's behind the camera, but he will help. Good. Right, so let's go. Let's go. By the stove now, you just like this stove. I see some water on your, in your pot. That's what, right. What's the next step for say sorrel cream? Okay, so anything that we're doing, it's a, there's a science to it. Yeah. With food, with beverages, we have to have our recipe. So you see we have our scale here, we already weighed out our sorrel. We have things ready. The first thing you're going to do is put that spice into the water. Come on Michael, put the bay leaf so in the water. Put it again? <laughs> we put it in our, yeah? Okay. Why are you putting in the bay leaf? We put it in the bay leaf because that gives a nice rustic traditional sense. You want to bring us some clothes? This is glove, yeah? That is clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? So, my pin? Yeah. So, okay. There you go. That looks good. Come on. Right. right. Put that in as well. What's the clove for now? The clove gives it that traditional kick. Mm -hmm. You know, you put clothes in ham, you put clothes in sorrel. It really brings out a, a specific smell that you really want mm -hmm. at Christmas time. The other day, I was brewing and my daughter got up and she said, it smells like Christmas in here. Okay. You know, and it's because of the clothes and those spices, it, it gives you that feeling. It's, that's why I say, it's a taste you must experience. How important are these spices for your... How do you say? Your, extremely. Your, your dish here. Extremely important. From the time you crack that bottle, the first thing you can smell is the spice. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that in the end. It's extremely important. Everything is local? Everything. everything is local. From the bay leaf to the spices to the sorrel. We don't have the dry sorrel that we bring in from any other country. We're not doing that. Okay. We go into the farmers. We're giving them that sale. We bring in our local mm -hmm. sorrel to the table. All right. So All what's right? the next step? All right. So once we have our spices in there, we're going to add our sorrel. Without so, the water boiling or with, with the water boiling? We put it in and we let it come to a boil and okay. then we leave it to, to stew as we would say. Oh, so we leave it, it to one time. You can put it in. Okay, okay. Right, so this is already measured. We already have how much sorrel we need for the amount of water is here. Is there any special type of sorrel or? You can use black sorrel or red sorrel, but I've been using the black sorrel. This is black sorrel. That's Why right. black sorrel for you? The, the black sorrel doesn't have as much acidity. Okay. And I want to serve as much customers and I think about the health of those customers. A lot of people sometimes they drink sorrel and they get up next day and they can't move. Yeah. The knees, the knees, yeah. the acidity. Yeah. So the black sorrel does, is not as acidic. Mm -hmm. And so for people who suffer with that, they can also drink my product. And it's important for your customers. Absolutely. Okay, so. Absolutely. So we add it to the pot. Okay. Nice. Put all you say, right? All. There you go. Right, man. You make sorrel before? No, but I just have wifey in the kitchen now. <laughs> <laughs> so I pretend you know you're doing. I feel you know what you're doing. No, Give no, it a nice little stir. Okay. 
I'm gonna get all this sorrel to be immersed completely in the water mm -hmm. and you leave it there. We bring it to a boil and the next step when you see this, it's going to be a nice stew. How, how you know how much the ratio from sorrel to water to we, we have come up with, a, with that secret recipe of how much water we need, how much spices we need and all of that. Okay, how yeah? important is that? That is extremely important because it will determine how strong the sorrel content would be mm -hmm. and how much alcohol we need to add to dilute it, how much water, how much sugar, all of that is necessary. So, I don't know if we qualified Otto, we might be drinking on the job today Otto. <laughs> <laughs> I would love for you to have a taste of it. It's a very versatile product and I'll tell you why in the end when you see um, the product itself and you taste it, it's not only just to drink but you can use it to do other things as well. Okay, we're looking forward to that. That's right. <laughs> All right, so Michael placed the sorrel in a pot, so I'm going to see what is happening now. The pot is on the fire, and Candace is going to give us her ball by ball what is happening here right. at the Sorrel Queen Kingdom. <laughs> so what's happening here? Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Is that the consistency that you're looking for? Well, you leave it to boil. Mm -hmm. As I told you, we get it to really brew here, and you're looking for a particular color consistency. Mm. We don't have that just yet. Right? So you have that, so that's like by eye? Or yes, by? by eye. You can tell when it's ready. But we also take off the fire and leave it. To what long time people will call draw. Mm -hmm. We're going to draw the sorrel. Mm -hmm. okay. We okay. leave it to stew. We leave it to simmer. We leave it so that all of the flavors of the bay leaf and all of the spices that we have in here, inclusive of the sorrel, comes right out and presents itself in the liquid. Nice. So the next stage is to show you that part. Nice. Yeah? So... We are going to see exquisite liquor sorrel in a few. All right, so we just finished boil the sorrel. We leave it like draw. Yes. That's what you said, right? That's right. So now, after the draw, what are we going to do next? We're going to strain it. All right, so I'm a strainer here. Yes, master strainer. So what we're going to do is we're yeah. going to try to get all of the pulp removed mm -hmm. from the sorrel mixture. So you could bring the container right. a little closer. Ready, Michael? Just close enough, yeah? Yes. All right. Oops. I need to pour this this way. So this is not hot. This is after it draws. This is after it, it has cool. been drawn for a couple hours. Okay, and you told me to take the spoon and press compress. It up. Yes. So right. we get every ounce of flavor and also all of the liquid out of the sorrel. Sorry, I'm fast pressing it too hard, right? I Let, don't me, see. Let me see what you're doing. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, man. I was stretching now when I get licks with the spoon. <laughs> you're doing good. You're doing good. Right. right, I think that's good. That should be fine. So from here, we're going to take this liquid uh -huh. and we're going to add all our final ingredients. Okay, okay. Ready for that? Yeah. Nice, man. Let's do it. All right, you want to do a little more? One more cup? One more cup? Yeah. All right. And you there say you press. Go. There you go. Give it a nice little press there. Doing good. Yeah, I thought we had to do a cooking segment. You know? Yes. <laughs> So this is where the magic happens. This is where the secret is implemented. And so, the Sorrel Queen will take it over from here. I realize. This is what, sugar? Yes. Are the secret ingredient? <laughs> Give it a nice taste, a nice swirl. 
You can already smell all of the flavors coming out in there. Our color is just gorgeous, just brilliant. The hues and the tone of that is just fantastic. And even the smell, ah, we're ready. Just to repeat some of the um, ingredients, right? I know you have your secret ingredients you yes. don't want to reveal. What are the ingredients that we're placing in now? So here now we have our alcohol. And we are going to sweeten it with some local brown sugar. Get our brown sugar in there. And then we give that a nice swirl and a nice mix. And the magic begins to happen. Okay. This process is reminding you anything? Give you any memories while you're doing this? Just really and truly growing up in Sangri Grandi countryside. You know, always helping your mom in the kitchen, especially at Christmas time making all of those local delicacies. My mom was very, very, ad, you know, adverse in making sorrel and preservatives. And I really got that tradition from her as well. And so it's kind of carrying on that legacy, which I'm very proud of. Okay, and if you had a word, words of advice for parents, or then now is that time with COVID-19, they say not to be in your bubble. Right. How you would encourage your kids to get involved in something like this? Well, this is a Christmas season. We have lots of things to do, not only outside, but inside of the house. So get your children involved, show them the traditions from scratch, let them learn how to do these things themselves so they can carry on these recipes, these traditions, and some of these local um, treats that we have at our Christmas time. Get them involved. The next step from this is bottling. From here, we get ready to put into our funnel, bottle, we get it sealed, we have it labeled, and we're ready for the shelf. Except in a manger with cows and sheep around. So now we reach the bottling process. We get our bottles filled with our local brew. Everything is all ready. The taste is there. The flavors are there. The color is there. That distinct red color of sorrel just makes you know it's Christmas time. So Michael was part of the making, well I'm part of the tasting. So I'm here with the Sorrel Queen, we're going to taste this exquisite liquor, mm -hmm. Sorrel drink. That's right. And um, you know, Michael driving, so I'm not driving. So I could, <laughs> I could, I think I could more than oblige to take a drink. All right. So, so let's... Otto, here we have it with you and we are going to pair it with some black cake. Nice. The reason why we are doing that is because this is a very versatile product. Mm -hmm. You can use it to soak your fruits for black cake. You can use it to drizzle on the black cake afterward. And you can even use it as a base for your cocktails at your Christmas time. So it's more than drinking. It's more than drinking. Nice. You can drink it as is. I have it already cold and chilled for you. Nice. Or you can have it on ice. It is totally nice. up to you. Nice. So the first thing you do is to give it a nice smell. Mm. Yeah, I smell the spices. You smell the first spices. of all, yes, yeah, standing yes. out. Yeah. And we say cheers. Cheers. To the festive season. To the festive season. Yes, impressed. <laughs> nice blend, smooth. You get that alcoholic kick at the back. Yeah, think again. All of the spices are there. Is this in Christmas or something? <laughs> I feel like I'm in Christmas. <laughs> 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 but um, I must say this is tasting very well. I mean, I give it an A plus. Yes, thank um, you. Um, it's it's there's so many different flavors happening in my right. mouth right now. So, you know. The alcohol is not there. Right. But I'm tasting the spices, mm -hmm. the, the whatever mm -hmm. your secret is. Mm -hmm. It's actually there. They know there's a strong spice. Right. And that is, I think that's a kick. Excellent. In this. Excellent. So, this Christmas, get your exquisite liquors, soul drink, 
You know, check out on Facebook, Instagram. It's worth it. Yes. And we're on some shelves throughout the country. We're at Uncle Beddoe's in Santa Cruz. We're also located on the Tunapuna Main Road at Sugar's Supermarket. We're also at Creative Treats on Edward Street at the U Park, Government U Park. And also, all the way down to Mayaro, not, not leaving out our people down there, Katy's School Spot. Get your bottle of exquisite sour liquor today. So I see a pour this oil mm -hmm. on the black cake and I wanted to try it. That's right. I never tried it before, so what are we looking for here? You're looking for the flavors of that sour liquor. Mm -hmm. Coming in, blending in with the black cake. Mm -hmm. You use it to soak your fruits as well, so you're also getting that flavor from within. And now you pour some on top, you get the flavor from outside as well. Tell me what you think. Mm, nice. I didn't drink it, huh? I taste it. Right. <laughs> so, some people, they don't like to drink mm -hmm. alcohol in that way, but they don't mind eating some black cake. Mm -hmm. So, you use the sour liquor to enhance the flavors that you already have. Yeah, bringing out the flavor. That's right. Of the fruit. That's right. Of the fruits. Mm. Yeah. Nice, nice blend. So, what do you think, Michael? Good to go? I'm here for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>